Hey, what's up, my tribe? Thank you so much for clicking on the video. Been having fun playing with new weapons in the Elden Ring, and this intelligence build is pretty fun and powerful. Yeah, it's no surprise that intelligence is still very strong. So you will have no problem dealing with regular enemies, big, small, swarms, or bosses. I call it the Chubby War Mage. I will break down how to set up this end game build from stats, weapon, armor, talents, and spells, and all the good stuff you need to have fun while we wait for Shadow of their tree expansion. And it's close. So gear up and game on. You did good, Chubby. You did good. The main weapon of this build is going to be a combination of the powerful wing of Astel Curve Sword with the Carrion Glintstone Staff. This build can be optimized even further, but I just wanted to have fun with it. The Wind of Astel has a lot of flexibility offensively, combining physical damage with magic damage, scaling B with intelligence. The normal attacks of this sword are very quick, and the strong attack can be charged and unleashes a wave of light that does magic damage and consumes zero FP that can hit the enemy a couple of times. And if you follow up with another charge, it will attack with another animation, and it's pretty cool. But the cherry on top of the Wing of Astel is the weapon art, called Nebula, that casts a dark cloud of stars in front of you that explode. They are very powerful and also do stance damage, so enough hits with the explosion can break the stance of enemies for a critical hit. It works wonders for slow and big enemies, but for faster enemies it's a bit complicated trying to hit them with it, so a combination of normal attacks, strong charge attacks, and spells are advised. To obtain Wing of Astel, I created another video because you have to make a little bit of a short journey and defeat a few bosses or do Rani's quest instead to end up close to it, so check the location guide in the card in the upper right corner or the link down in the description below. The second weapon I mentioned is the Carrion Glintstone Staff that scales S with intelligence. Its only purpose is to cast the spells that will support this build, buffing magic damage, killing enemies at a distance, or dealing with swarms. Also, it's super important when opening for bosses, you take a sip of the Physique Flask and cast your spells away to start doing damage at a distance and cheap away the most damage possible. The staff can be located in a body in Carrion Study Hall before the second lift in Leona of the Lakes. For this build, I'm using one of the greatest armor sets in the game, in my opinion, from its utility and the looks. Like, you know, fashion souls forever. Lionel's armor set is comprised of helm, armor, gauntlets, and greaves, and it's one of the high poise armors in the game, allowing you not to be interrupted while attacking with the Wing of Astel. You can find this armor set in Lanedale Royal Capital. Just follow this route if it's the first time entering the Royal Capital. The first talisman I'm using is the Magic Scorpion Charm to increase the magic damage by 12%. Increasing the damage the Wing of Astel does as well the charge attack and the Nebula weapon art and the spells we use, of course. Note that this talisman also increases the physical damage taken by 10%, but with Lionel's armor you have a good physical damage negation. The second talisman is Carrion Filigree Crest that will lower FP consumption of skills hence allowing you to use more and more of the nebula weapon art of the Wing of Astel. Next is the Shard of Alexander that becomes a staple for weapons with strong skills. This talisman will boost the attack power of nebula by 15%. And the last talisman is the Great Jar's Arsenal that will raise maximum equip load in case you are running low on endurance to wear Lioness armor, or want to use a second Wing of Astel, or even a shield. A great alternative, if you have enough endurance points, is the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman to boost your physical damage negation even more. 
or the Ritual Sword Talisman to raise your attack power when HP is at a maximum when you start engaging enemies or bosses with spells, or if you find yourself doing a lot of critical hits after breaking the stance with Nebula, then use Assassin's Cerulean Dagger to keep that FP up. The spells I wanted to use for this build were selected only for fun. With the Carry and Gleanstone staff, you can use more spells that will benefit from it, but this is what I wanted to play with, and still, those spells are very powerful and do decent damage. First is Terra Magica that will create a sigil on the ground and when standing on it will increase the magical damage by 35%. I use it when starting a fight with the spell or try to stand on it when casting Nebula if I'm fighting a slow enemy. Next is the sniper's spell called Loretta's Great Bow that can be charged for increased damage. This is what I use after Terra Magica to opening for bosses or just kill that enemy that it's at a distance. Next is carry a great sword that casts a super big magical sword that sweeps in front of you. And the single purpose of this is to deal with swarms if you don't want to use the nebula skill. And lastly is the rock sling spell just to fight magic immune enemies. For the physique class, I'm using the magic shrouding crack tier to increase the magic attack power by 20%. Use it specifically when opening for bosses. And also I use the Dexterity Knock Crystal tier to increase Dexterity to have an increase in the Wing of Astral attack with normal and strong attack. This tier is interchangeable if you like to go all out opening for bosses uh, with spells and not use any FP with the Cerulean Hidden tier. The class that I recommend if you're creating this build from scratch is one with high intelligence like the Astrologer or a mix with intelligence, dexterity, and endurance like the warrior or the prisoner. In this showcase, my character is at level 200 and is a Bagamon, so the attributes number can differ from yours. So I got vigor at 60, mine at 28, endurance at 35, strength at 50, no points in strength, dexterity at 45, intelligence at 80, this is the last soft cap, and Faith and Arcane with no points in them. Although this build can be optimized even more, it was really fun playing with the chubby War Mage, wrecking havoc with the Wing of Astel as it's a very powerful magic sword. The only problem I encountered during my NG Plus playthrough was fights against fast enemies. It can be tough when timing the Nebula with the slow cast time and the quick enemy attacks. If that's the case for you, I recommend mixing the nebula with regular and strong attacks and the eventual spell. So if you plan an intelligence build with a little bit of sword combat, you might want to try this one. Hope you enjoyed this video like I did making it. If you run a similar build or different items, please post it down below in the comments. I'm very interested in reading it and just talking to you. If you want to help the channel, hit that like button so this video can get to more people. And if you don't want to miss future videos, just subscribe to the channel and be part of the tribe. By the way, if you like Intelligence Build, please check out my playlist of Intelligence Build that are still insanely powerful to this day in Elden Ring. Thank you so much and see you on the next one. Ciao!